So the simple EIF looks like this for, say, a flat wall, or at least a small region in which we can assume the wall is flat, just to make things a little easier. The velocity is our surface. There's a vortex sheet along the surface. So this has strength gamma of s, as we discussed earlier in the course. This is the s direction. Here's the n direction. And the velocity is basically going to be uniform in the n direction. So ui of s and n is given by this velocity distribution. The velocity at the wall is uiw of s. The pressure is our wall. The s direction, and the n direction, and the pressure is just going to be the i because the velocity is not varying, so the pressure won't vary, and then again we get p i w of s. So contrast this with the real viscous flow. which looks like this. Well, we have a boundary layer edge that's growing, and say at this point, there's the n direction, there's the s direction. So there's a boundary layer thickness above which the velocity is uniform. So we call this dashed line NE of S, where the subscript E represents edge. So this is the edge of the boundary layer. So then here we have U of S and N, and at the edge of the boundary layer, we have the E of S. And then the vorticity, instead of being confined to a sheet, is omega of S and N all through the boundary layer. The pressure is given. Again, if we draw in an E of S, we've got our vorticity, omega of S and N. The pressure now will again be roughly constant. So PE of S will just be the same as any value P of S and N, and here at the wall we have PW of S. And this is because V is much smaller than U. Basically, and here there's no subscript I's because this is the real flow rather than our imaginary and viscid flow. This means that the streamlines are not significantly curved in the real flow. So the implication of that is that P of N must be roughly constant because if it was the pressure was varying, there would be streamlined curvature. So this says that P W of S is essentially equal to P E of S. So the wall pressure and the edge pressure at a given S location are the same. So this 
is at n equals 0, and this is at n equals me at the edge of the boundary layer. And this, then, because outside the boundary layer the flow is uh, is indeed can be can indeed be modeled as inviscid. We can get this from Bernoulli. So that P W of S, which is approximately P E of S, is equal to P infinity plus one half. Rho v infinity squared minus one half rho u e squared. And we drop really here, this is u e squared plus v e squared, but since v is much smaller than u, when it's squared, v e squared becomes truly negligible compared to u e, and so we drop it here. So we call u e the edge velocity. So if the boundary layer then is very thin, the simple EIF is actually a good model because what we get is that UI at the wall of S is approximately the edge velocity. And that means that P I at the wall of S is essentially P at the wall in the real flow. So the equivalent inviscid flow model, the EIF, captures the surface pressure. This is why it can accurately predict lift and moment. But again, not drag, because we're not capturing in the EIF the skin friction uh, and displacement effects. Now, if we compare the sketches of the real flow and the simple EIF, we can see that the major difference is that the EIF does not take into account the displacement effect of the slow fluid in the boundary layer. So this would, displacement effect basically wedges the outer flow away from the wall. And then sketch that by, let's say if we had flat plates starting here. where upstream the flow speed is uniform and then boundary layer starts to grow as the flow moves along the plate so that at some location here the boundary layer exaggerated, but the boundary area looks like this, and the streamlines are pushed away from the wall because of this growth of boundary layer. So here we have rho u of s and n, and again this dashed line represents n e of s. So again, we see the flow is actually not quite parallel to the wall. So if this is 
the N E of S line rho u is this and rho v is this. So there's going to be a component of velocity normal to the wall. So now the flow tangency for the external flow is no longer parallel to the wall. This changes the entire flow field and the simple equivalent air, uh, invested flow model ignores this. Next we'll look at how to fix this discrepancy.